spent two weeks traveling and hiking my way around the island of Madeira, and in this video, I'd like to share with you the hikes that I conquered, ordering them from my least to most favorite. Number 10, Boca do Risco. We'd set out on this walk with slightly higher expectations than what were delivered. The walk was shorter than we'd envisaged and more overgrown with less vantage points than our research had led us to expect. When the vegetation thinned out though, the views were spectacular, both back onto Porto da Cruz and eastwards towards the dragon's tail. One thing to note is that the Teleferico de Faja Dolorano looked very much closed on our visit and reviews online seem to suggest that it's permanently shut. Number 9. Levara dos Cedros Set just down the hill from the famous Fanau forest, we found ourselves walking along a mysterious feeling Levara with thanks to the mist. Despite it being late July, it felt like an English forest in autumn with its yellow and orange leaves. It gets muddy in places, and further towards the waterfall, the feel of the trail shifts into something a bit more tropical, with its giant ferns and cascading waterfalls. The waterfall area is slippery, and the viewing platform en route can be a bit of an anticlimax if, like for us, the valley is shrouded in cloud. If doing a there and back walk beginning at Corral Falso, it's a flat 5.9 km out to the waterfalls, and double this to return to your car. If starting at Fanal, then there's an extra 1.3 kilometers on top of this and that part of the trail mostly consists of a 250 meter elevation. Number eight, Levada Faja do Rodriguez. This was the first Levada walk that we did on the north coast of the island and we were impressed by the gorgeous flowers that lined the beginning of the trail and the man-made waterfall close to the start too. The Levada was home to a number of fish it would every now and again provide us with breathtaking views out over the Sao Vicente Valley and pushed us through a few tunnels. There's one section where if rains have been heavier than what they have been for our visit, you may get wet walking behind a waterfall. Online grading deemed this walk to be of moderate difficulty. However, a local tipped us off that it's actually very easy and what pushes it into the moderate category is the one kilometre tunnel towards the end. She told us to turn around at this point because what comes after that tunnel isn't really worth walking for two kilometers bent over the whole time. The waterfalls at the entrance to that tunnel felt like a nice enough reward for the walk out there. Top tip though, if you do have a rental car, you'll need to park it 200 meters down from the Levada trailhead and then walk up because you're not allowed to drive rental cars on the dirt road. Number seven, Levada do Rey. The saying is, don't judge a book by its cover, and in this case, I'd say don't judge a Levada walk by its trailhead, as this one begins a water treatment plant. The variety of flowers found in the first section of this hike makes it very attractive. Every now and again, the foliage will thin out, giving views across the lush green mountains, and unlike many other trails where the flowers at the beginning peter out, the wild crocosmias kept appearing many kilometers into the trail. This walk felt like it had playful elements, from a ladder to access a side waterfall, to cute stepping stones, or the real treat from the Levada, needing to walk behind a pretty substantial waterfall, cooling us down in the summer heat. Number six, Levada Caldeirao Verde. This is one of the more popular Levada walks on Madeira, so I would recommend arriving early if you wish to beat the crowds. The trail begins in the picture-perfect Quemadas Forest Park, which has a couple of thatched roof houses, one being a coffee shop and another a museum. Like most Levada walks, it's an out-and-back trail of 6.5 kilometers and is rated as moderate. The trail is made up of shaded sections with a diverse range of plants and trees, four tunnels, so a torch of some description is very important, and exposed sections offering terrific landscapes to gaze over. Once at Caldeira Verde, you're presented with an epic waterfall that plunges into a pretty lake. A perfect spot for a picnic, and if you're feeling brave, maybe a swim. A couple of things to note about this trail. We found, as a couple, the narrow end to be frustrating because, as a couple, 
There was the expectation that we would move over for larger groups. We got around this later on by piggybacking onto a larger group, and this was the only hike where we had to pay to park at a cost of three euros for the day in 2022. Number five, Levara Castellejo. I'd heard from locals and digital nomads who'd spent prolonged periods of time on the island that this Levada wasn't overly exciting, but as a tourist, I loved it. It was unlike any of the other hikes that we'd done during our trip, as the first section of the Levada was very open. It offered interesting views for several kilometers. Instead of being removed from civilization like many other trails, this one took us around the back of villages allowing us to see up close people's homes, their gardens which were plentiful of fruit and vegetables. We could see their livestock and their dogs too. The Levada later curved into a valley, much like others that we'd hiked during our trip. It gave a view out onto a large waterfall, though in fairness it was pretty dried up in the summer. And then the climax of the trail took us to a bouncy wooden hanging bridge set deep within the woods. Number four, Pico do Arriero to Pico Ruivo. Pico do Arriero is a popular spot to watch the sunrise from as you can drive to it and you're almost guaranteed to see a cloud inversion. From there is a 6.1 kilometer hike across the exposed mountain tops, some shortcuts through tunnels and climbs up grueling ladders. Along the way, you'll be treated to pretty flora, potentially super cute fauna, and some of the most spectacular views that the island of Madeira has to offer. It's a 300 meter descent and then a 400 meter ascent to reach the highest point on the island of Madeira, Pico Ruivo, sitting at 1,861 meters. If you drive yourself, then you have the arduous task of returning the way in which you came. And even as an avid hiker in the summer heat, I found the return leg a real challenge. A popular alternative is to take a tour or a taxi and be picked up from the easier to access Achara do Tessiera, which is only 2.8 kilometers and almost all downhill. Number three, Ponte de São Lourenço. The peninsula is located in the northeastern tip of the island and its summit was more akin to a desert landscape rather than the lush green forests that Madeira is better known for. Whilst officially listed as a three kilometre trail out to the Sardine House, we found a less well-maintained trail that continued up the cliffs behind it, giving further views. Unlike many of the Lavada walks, the vegetation is low, offering spectacular vistas of coves, sea arches, and gorgeous turquoise waters. However, the lack of large trees would provide no respite from the sun if it's out, and also, unlike Livares, this trail was pretty undulating. What made this hike so special and helped it to secure the spot of number three was the many opportunities that the trail gave for a wild swim in the sea, something that none of the other nine trails that we walked offered us. Number two, Livares Moinho and Livada Nova. This walk had a Mediterranean feel to it, the walk out along Nova was far more exposed than most of the Levada walks that we did on this trip, though with plenty of safety barriers along the way. A tunnel towards the end pushed us out into this canyon with an epic waterfall, and both the trail and the Levada went behind it. What I especially loved about this walk was that once we'd reached the second waterfall just a little further up, we could then drop down a few flights of stairs onto the Levada Moinho which would then take us back to where we parked the car, making this a circular Levada walk, something that we found to be quite unusual. A quick honorable mention, Levada dos Balcos. At just one and a half kilometers one way, I couldn't truly class this as being a hike, but wanted to include it as it's a pretty short Levada walk out to a viewpoint that looks out onto Pico do Arriero and a breathtaking forested valley. And number one, Levara das 25 Fontes. We adored our 25 Fontes hike experience, but appreciate that this may come as a surprise as the internet seems to have very split views. We arrived early, so felt like we had the trail down to the Lagoa das 25 Fontes to ourselves, 
finding just one of the couple there on our arrival. The name comes from this plunge pool which has 25 springs cascading into it from the Port de Serra. Rather than immediately returning to the car, on our way back we took a 1.6 km detour out to the Risco waterfall where we had a packed lunch. Again, whilst we could have then returned to our car after this, we chose to spend the afternoon hiking a further 5 or so kilometres, first out to the Lagoa do Vento, a superb lake that splits Risco waterfall into two, and later we hiked further out into the valley to join the Levada Alacrim, complete with fish and its own little cascade. Do you agree with the ordering of these hikes or feel like I may have missed an important one? Please do let me know in those comments below.